Well, it's a warm, sunny day in the Ozarks. Another great time to start working on the wind chimes. We're almost done with this. I just need a few more things cut out of wood. The middle part is called the clapper or the striker that hangs in between the chimes. We have to design and cut that out. And then hanging from below that will be the wind sail or the wind catcher. Uh, that's its sole purpose is to help the uh, striker move around basically help catch the wind and move it from place to place I'm gonna go with the star pattern on the striker and on the wind sail and eh, kind of a rounded triangle kind of look like a guitar pick almost is what I chose for that so let's get started okay a review of what I have here now this is the design I'm gonna use for the wind catcher I'm simply going to cut that out with a pair of scissors and I'm gonna use this I think uh, you know, three-eighths plywood to make that out of. That in time may not be a very weather resistant proposition, but it's all I have around right now and I can always replace the wind catcher later. And by the way, I did go out to the front porch and rob <laughs> the hooks I usually use to hang Christmas lights and that's what I'm actually going to suspend the chimes with. Um, but that's okay because I think those rails out on my porch are going to get replaced by Christmas anyway, so these are probably going to be obsolete or need replacing. And then the actual striker is going to be made out of this same uh, uh, one and a half inch plywood that I made the uh, other um, that the uh, support was made out of and of course I've got various compasses and scissors and measuring devices and then this is the template again Lee Height has a wonderful website I'm going to cut out that star right there and uh, then put it on top of the wood right below it and then we're going to cut out the star in a similar way to the uh, way we cut out the support piece and uh, then we should be able to sus uh, suspend all this from the support and see what happens today all right, so I cut this out, and I did it in a way that preserved the actual shape of that circle because I'm going to use those uh, dots on there as reference points for where I drill the hole to support the chime. So I kind of wanted to keep that intact, although I probably could have figured it out anyway. Uh, but there's the star, and of course the star is going to go on this piece of wood right here. It's a windy day today, <laughs> but uh seems like it's always been. Welcome to spring. Um, but anyway, that star is going to go on that piece of wood. I'll basically trace it out, cut it out, smooth it up, and get it ready for hanging on the actual chimes. Well, because I'm cutting through pretty thick wood, I did decide to use the circular saw to make the rough cuts on the star. Now, when you're using a circular saw, of course, you can only go to the top point here, and then the rest of it doesn't get cut out because it's, you know, it's an arc of a blade. And then, of course, I just take my um, jigsaw here and cut out the remaining pieces. And a little clean up there. All right, well, there's the finished product. Now, I never did get my bandsaw to work, and these cuts would have been a lot more precise had I been able to get that particular tool to work. So using a jigsaw and a circular saw, this is certainly not perfect. Probably from your perspective on this video it is, but when I look at it, it's, you know, it's got a little bit of curvature on the ends of the stars. But, of course, I'm going to sand this out, but it, for looks, yes, that bothers me. For actual functionality, I don't think this is going to be much of a problem. And there they are, the star-shaped striker and the wind sail or wind catcher. Okay, so I brought back the support disc. If you remember, we cut that out, and now this is why this template was so important. I taped it back together, and uh, you can see where the five chimes are going to go. Those are the round circles. And then what Lee has done on this template so very nicely is he's put the center of the circle on there, plus... He's put those blue dots representing where I should put the support. So it couldn't have made it easier for me to design this. All right, there's the disc, if you'll recall. Now, I use the template to mark the holes where the hooks are going to go. That's those things right there, the stolen Christmas hooks. And <laughs> those are going to go right there. Okay, that's that side. And on the other side, there's the center. Um, that's where the, um, the basically the support that will hold the striker and the wind sail will basically attach up to and I've got also four holes that kind of center this thing now what am I going to use to support if you'll remember from the first uh, couple of parts to this series I had this wire here and I was afraid that it would be ultimately uh, too wide of a gauge or too stiff but I think it would probably make a very excellent support for the actual disc and the chime set itself then I also had this 100 pound fishing line which I was afraid wasn't going to work in the long run and I would have used that had I not found this. I have a whole brand new, un I just cut it open, a trimmer line for my weed whacker and I, and I put this through the actual um, 
chime which is right there and it actually worked out fairly well and I think I'm going to use that again with the premise of this being I, I don't want to go out and buy anything else. Let's see how it works. All right, this is very cattywampus. So there's the disc. I'm using that stiff gauge wire and all I'm really doing as you can see there is putting it through the disc and around to kind of hook it. And then it all kind of goes up and it's actually hanging on a hook I use to hang my beer in a bag when I'm brewing outside here in the garage in the warm season. Then I've got the hooks. And again, this is all very temporary. I really don't have the right materials, but I am kind of after the sound today. I'm really kind of anxious. So that is my temporary setup to test the chimes. Now it's time to get the weed whacker line and run it through the actual chimes. Okay, so here it is, very temporarily hung from a hook in my garage door. I just kind of played it with the bending of these wires to make the support as flat as I can. That would obviously benefit from having stiffer supports. Again, you want that to be level. And then we actually ended up using um, fishing wire. I said I wouldn't use it, but the uh, line for the weed whacker just proved too hard to tie a knot in. So we just went through the center of the holes of these chimes right there, made one loop, and then hung it over the hooks. The tops of all these in an ideal world should be level with each other. They are not, uh, simply because the line and the knotting just made it very hard to make those equidistant. Now the star or the striker is in the center. Okay. Now I would usually or want to use a turnbuckle to make sure that this star is as level as possible for our purposes. Now it's just fine. I did use the actual weed whacker line to support it and then the actual wind catcher is hanging by a fishing line. Give it a push. And of course it's been breezy on all these projects and of course now when I'm actually ready to use this it hasn't been windy at all. But there is the sound. Pretty cool. All very temporary. This needs cleaning up, but we have chimes.